NFL talent comes from all over the country, but which player is considered the best from each state? You've got fertile lands like Florida, California, and Texas where football prowess runs deep, but even states like South Dakota, Maine, Wyoming have produced some diamonds in the rough. Now, for some clarification, this isn't the best player born in each state. Instead, our criteria says the player must have spent the majority of his childhood in their respective state. For example, Gail Sayers, he was born in Wichita, Kansas, raised in Omaha, Nebraska, and that's where he'll be represented. Got it? Okay, without further ado, it's time to reveal the 50 best from coast to coast. Alabama, Terrell Owens. Young almost falls down, throws to the end zone. Owens! Owens caught it! He caught it! He caught it! He makes the winning touchdown catch! One of the greatest finishes in 49er history! While there's no shortage of elite players from the heart of Dixieland, Terrell Owens is the biggest game changer of them all. The Hall of Famer ranks third all-time in career receiving yards and touchdowns. Alaska, Mark Schlereth. From a football hotbed to a frozen wilderness, our first two states were not created equal. But Alaska did produce three-time Super Bowl champion Mark Schlereth. The guard captured his first Lombardi with Washington in 1991 and then went back-to-back -back with the Broncos in 97 and 98. He started 156 games and made Pro Bowl appearances at both stops in his career. Arkansas, Don Hudson. The original receiving threat for one of the NFL's original franchises, dominating the league before the art of pass catching was even a thing. That guy right there, in my mind, probably changed the wide receiver position as much as anybody who's ever played. Hudson's career receiving touchdowns record wasn't broken until Steve Largent surpassed him in 1989. His success and impact on the game make him the clear pick for the state of Arkansas. Arizona, Randall McDaniel was one of the most feared and powerful linemen of the 90s. Don't believe it? Check this out. And they line up Randall McDaniel in the backfield as a fullback. And give it to Whoa. Allen behind McDaniel. Oh my lord, watch McDaniel. There is Singletary. That is why McDaniel's in the backfield. There were only two seasons in which McDaniel didn't earn All-Pro or Pro Bowl honors, his first and his last. The Hall of Famer started 222 games over his 14-year career. California, Tom Brady. Even though the Golden State has supplied plenty of all-time legends, there was no point in overthinking this one. The GOAT has perhaps the most accomplished career in the history of U.S. pro sports. Tom Brady redefined what it means to win in the NFL and has set an unbelievably high standard for success from his first title and the Patriots are Super Bowl champions. to his last. You're looking at the greatest right there. Connecticut, Dwight Freeney, the best player in the state's history, reached Hall of Fame status in 2024. Freeney used his patented spin move to post three first-team All-Pro seasons and seven trips to the Pro Bowl. The Super Bowl champ racked up 125 and a half career sacks, good enough for top 20 all-time. Colorado, Christian McCaffrey. They get it off, McCaffrey, right side, big seam, cut, 30, McCaffrey! Touchdown, San Francisco! Christian McCaffrey is one of just three players in NFL history to record 1,000 rushing and receiving yards in the same season. He went on to win Offensive Player of the Year in 2023, leading San Francisco to Super Bowl 58. Delaware, Randy White. One of the greatest to wear the star on his helmet, Randy White was a menace on the Cowboys' doomsday defense. From 1977 to 1985, White accumulated seven first-team All-Pro appearances. He also won co-MVP of Super Bowl XII and a beatdown of the Broncos. Morton faked and the rush is on from Randy White and down goes Morton. Nobody likes to play football more than Randy White, I'll tell you. Hawaii, Olin Krutz. Football in the Aloha State is a major deal, so it's no wonder the island of Oahu produced a legend like Olin Krutz. The center spent 14 years in the league, nearly all with the Bears. He was a perennial Pro Bowler throughout the 2000s and even helped Chicago get back to the Super Bowl in 2006. Florida, 
Deacon Jones. Crowning just one player here was nearly impossible. How could we not mention Dion, Emmett, Ray Lewis, and a few dozen more? But we had to give someone the honor, so how about the man who coined the term sack? He came after us <laughs> nothing but malice, and everything that you hear about his slaps and anything else, we were recipient. Deacon Jones set a new standard for pass rushing in the 60s and 70s. Leading the Rams' fearsome foursome, he notched 173 and a half career sacks, third on the unofficial list. Georgia, Mel Blunt. Choosing a single player from the Peach State provided to be similarly difficult, so we went with a guy who changed the game. Mel Blunt was so physical that the league created a rule limiting the amount of contact a DB could have with the receiver. The Hall of Famer captured four Super Bowls with Pittsburgh and was the first corner ever to win Defensive Player of the Year. Idaho, Larry Wilson. The Hall of Famer's versatility at safety brought the position to new heights in the 1960s. Wilson was one of the first players to bring the safety blitz to prominence and once picked off 10 passes in a season. Played one game with Cass on both hands and wow. still intercepted a pass. Third age is Larry Wilson playing with two broken hands. Pirates Nelson's pass and returns 34 yards to the Pittsburgh three. Illinois, Dick Buckus. He grew up in the Windy City, went to the University of Illinois, and was eventually picked third overall by his hometown team in 1965, a perfect fit for the Bears culture. Are you as mean as you look in the films? Well, it depends what films you're looking at. You got four personal fouls in one game. <laughs> you're either just really mad about something or you really don't care. Buckus was one of the most menacing defenders the league had ever seen, making eight Pro Bowls in a nine-year career. Indiana, Rod Woodson. A supreme athlete at corner, safety, and kick returner, Woodson took home the 1993 Defensive Player of the Year award and amassed 71 career picks, good for third on the all-time list. He made 11 Pro Bowls and even won a Lombardi as a leader on that vaunted 2000 Ravens defense. Iowa, Kurt Warner. His story is literally a movie. The undrafted quarterback went from bagging groceries at a supermarket to a Super Bowl champion and two-time league MVP. I hear Kurt Warner is a guy that is so humble. He's got his stuff together. He just completed, in my estimation, the greatest season ever of a quarterback. Warner was a few plays away from being known as a three-time Super Bowl champ. At his peak, he was one of the most efficient passers we've ever seen. Kansas, Barry Sanders. There's no debate here. The Wichita native spent 10 seasons with the Lions, rushing for at least 1,000 yards in each. I mean, they ought to just you know, go to their homes. And Sanders still on his feet, and Sanders is gone. Some of those moves, there's only one guy in this game that makes, and you just saw that guy. Barry joined the 2K club in 1997, winning NFL co-MVP in the process. He led the league in rushing four times and was a pro bowler in every year he played. Kentucky, Dermonte Dawson. Born and raised in the Bluegrass State, he attended the University of Kentucky and was drafted by the Steelers in 1988. Dawson was a seven-time Pro Bowler and the best center of the 90s. He helped lead Pittsburgh to seven playoff trips, including a berth to Super Bowl 30. Louisiana, Peyton Manning. The Sheriff earns the badge here, and it shouldn't really be a surprise. Only two other quarterbacks in league history have thrown for more yards and touchdowns. Manning. Let's it fly. It's caught by Thomas. There's the record for Peyton Manning. 51 touchdowns, the new single season mark. Manning won a record five MVP awards, but his two Super Bowl wins solidified a legendary career. Massachusetts, Nick Bonaconti. He was more than just a Hall of Fame linebacker, he was also a lawyer, a sports agent, and a philanthropist. After starting his career with the Patriots, where he earned four first-team All-Pro selections, Bonaconti joined the Dolphins, and as a member of the famed no-named defense, he helped Miami capture two Lombardi trophies. Maryland, Stephon Diggs. And steps into it, pass is
first making a name for himself in Minnesota, Diggs went on to have four straight Pro Bowl seasons in Buffalo. The former Maryland Terp has since moved on to the Texans, where he's set to surpass 10,000 career receiving yards. Maine, Chet Bulger. While the state's more known for moose, pine trees, and lobster, it has produced a handful of NFL players. Bulger lined up on the O-line for the Cardinals' 1947 championship squad. Michigan, Antonio Gates. 16 NFL seasons retiring as the league's most productive tight end ever. Not bad for a college basketball player. Rivers throwing into the end zone. Touchdown, Antonio Gates. 112 career touchdown catches. That's the most by an NFL tight end all time. With three straight All-Pro nods from 2004 to 2006, Gates quickly established himself as one of the league's best. The eight-time Pro Bowler went on to score 116 career touchdowns. Minnesota, Larry Fitzgerald. He grew up as a ball boy for the Vikings, learning from Randy Moss and Chris Carter. It's no wonder Fitzgerald morphed into them once he got to the NFL. Warner has time. Go. Fitzgerald into Steeler territory. 30, 20, 10. Arizona has the lead. The 11-time Pro Bowler compiled over 17,000 career receiving yards, second only to this man. Mississippi, Jerry Rice. Rice sits atop the sport as the all-time leader in receiving yards and touchdowns. In the conversation for the greatest player to step foot on the gridiron, Rice was a machine for 20 seasons. And they're gonna go his way! And oh, he he's got it. my record! He did it! Jerry Rice is just unstoppable. He broke the NFL's all-time touchdown record in 1994 and went on to play 10 more seasons. Think about that. Missouri, Roger Worley. They say he was the very first shutdown corner. Worley played his entire career in the show me state, from youth football all the way to the pros. He played 14 seasons for the St. Louis Cardinals, later earning a gold jacket. Montana, Pat Donovan. The four-time Pro Bowl tackle was an anchor on the Cowboys' O-line in the 70s and 80s. Donovan helped protect Roger Staubach and paved the way for Tony Dorsett in Dallas' Super Bowl XII victory. Nebraska, Gale Sayers. The Kansas Comet originated one state to the north. Sayers exploded onto the NFL scene in 1965, scoring 22 touchdowns with the Bears, a still standing rookie record. I loved watching him run. Like going to the theater, it was like watching ballet. All you other guys, you may be NFL players, but you're just, you're just clowns, you're just highway cones for this guy to run around. He was an all-pro in each of his first five seasons and eventually made it to Canton on his first ballot. Nevada, Steven Jackson. Following in Marshall Falk's footsteps is no easy task, but Sin City's own Steven Jackson didn't disappoint. With time ticking in the fourth quarter, this is Jackson breaking tackles, moving tacklers, and touchdown St. Louis. Look at the power inside. That's why you gotta feed him. That's what you got him there for. Jackson rushed for 1,000 yards in eight straight seasons from 2005 to 2012. The bruising back ranks top 20 all time in rushing yards. New Hampshire, Greg Landry. The first quarterback taken in the 1968 draft, he spent most of his career with the Lions. Landry helped lead Detroit to the playoffs in 1970 and made a Pro Bowl the following season. He has the third most QB wins in team history. New Mexico, Brian Erlacher. He's another one of those homegrown talents playing collegiately for the Lobos. Erlacher made an immediate impact with Chicago, winning 2000 Defensive Rookie of the Year. This guy could be the Bears middle linebacker for the next 12 to 15 years. Erlacher went on to be named All-Pro four times, won Defensive Player of the Year in 2005, and an NFC title in 2006. New Jersey, Franco Harris. Bradshaw looking for somebody to throw to, fires it downfield. And there's a collision. And that's caught out of the air. The ball is pulled in by Franco Harris. Harris is going for a touchdown for Pittsburgh. Holy moly. 
The 1972 Offensive Rookie of the Year was a big reason the Steelers captured four Lombardi trophies that decade. Harris compiled eight 1,000-yard rushing seasons and should be remembered as one of the best backs of his time. New York, Jim Brown. Another obvious choice here, the great Jim Brown began his football journey on Long Island before attending Syracuse. He took the NFL by storm in 1957, becoming the first and only rookie to win league MVP. Jimmy Brown again, all 228 pounds, bowling through the middle and thundering 68 yards for the fourth score. The three-time MVP retired as perhaps the greatest player the sport had ever seen. Cleveland's 1964 NFL championship completed Brown's legendary resume. North Carolina, Bobby Bell. The ferocious linebacker was drafted by both the NFL's Vikings and the AFL's Chiefs in 1963. Bell took the only guaranteed contract offered and went on to alter the course of Kansas City football. Six All-Pro selections, two AFL titles, and a win over those Vikings in Super Bowl IV. North Dakota, Pete Retzlaff. If you think you can't find studs in the 22nd round of the draft, then you're dead wrong. Pass-catching extraordinaire Pete Retzlaff helped Philly win the 1960 NFL Championship and racked up nearly 1,200 yards and 10 TDs in 1965. Ohio, Jack Lambert. He was an extremely intellectual linebacker, which I don't think was the association with him at the time, probably because he was toothless and probably because he looked kind of like a madman. There's an abundance of talent from the birthplace of pro football, but we'll give the nod to one of the NFL's fiercest defenders. Lambert was the rock in the middle of the Steelers' dynasty, winning Defensive Player of the Year in 1976. Oklahoma, Steve Largent. No one expected him to become the most prolific pass catcher in NFL history. The Tulsa native owned nearly every major receiving record when he retired in 1989. There it is! Oh, touchdown Seahawks! At long pursuit of Don Hudson. And the NFL is over. Largent's 100 touchdown catches still rank among the top 10 all time. Oregon, Troy Polamalu. The Hall of Famer spent his youth living in southwestern Oregon, then returned to his birthplace to play college ball for the Trojans. Polamalu was an eight-time Pro Bowler, two-time Super Bowl champ, and the 2010 Defensive Player of the Year. Palmer wants to throw it. He's back, throws it over the middle. Intercepted by Troy. He's at the 30, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. He's hit and dies for the pylon. Touchdown. As soon as he comes up with the ball, he is thinking goal line and six. Pennsylvania, Joe Montana. A bevy of legends to choose from here, but we're going to go with Joe Cool. Montana's the first player ever to win three Super Bowl MVPs, and his Niners were the team of the 1980s. No moment was too big, as seen by his game-winning drive in Super Bowl 23. Back to throw, Montana. Stepped up, throws. Touchdown, And to watch this absolute surgeon on the football field, and one of the all-time greats do his thing again, it's almost like poetry. Rhode Island, Jerry Philbin. The two-time All-Pro was one of the best pass rushers in AFL history and a big part of the Jets' heyday in the late 1960s. Philbin enjoyed 10 seasons as a pro, helping New York win Super Bowl III. South Carolina, Art Shell. He's among the best offensive tackles in NFL history and a two-time Super Bowl champ. Shell spent 15 seasons with Oakland, making eight Pro Bowls in the process. The Hall of Famer went on to become Raiders head coach, making three playoff trips in the 90s. South Dakota, Adam Vinatieri. Adam Vinatieri, no time on the clock, and the Patriots have won Super Bowl 36 looking for a second Super Bowl title in three years. Looks good. There just isn't a better time for him than the final moments of a Super Bowl, is there? He's perhaps the most clutch kicker in league history and played a whopping 24 years in the NFL. Vinatieri is the league's all-time leading scorer and a four-time Super Bowl champ. Tennessee, Reggie White. The Minister of Defense stayed in the Volunteer State all the way through college before transforming into an NFL wrecking ball. That's why they call him impact player. Reggie White took over this game. I'm bringing the sack to the pack. You have to take care of Reggie White. 
As you're coming, and always going to be sacked in number 92. Reggie White has been relentless. He recorded 21 sacks in just 12 games, winning 1987 Defensive Player of the Year. After signing as a marquee free agent in Green Bay, White led the pack to a win in Super Bowl 31. The 13-time Pro Bowler still has the second most career sacks in NFL history. Texas, Joe Green. From one elite defender to another, Mean Joe tops the list from this proud football state. And trust us, this was splitting hairs. Green spearheaded Pittsburgh's franchise turnaround from one of the NFL's worst teams to the best, winning two Defensive Player of the Year awards and four Super Bowls. You look up to that guy, and you don't want to let him down. With Joe Green, I found that leadership really does matter. A quick honorable mention to studs like Baugh, Lilly, Breeze, Randall, Tomlinson, Campbell, Mahomes, and so many more. Utah, Merlin Olson, Integral to the Rams' fearsome foursome of the 60s, he patrolled the interior of LA's D-line for 15 sensational seasons. But my job requires that I do certain things. I made some commitments to uh, to doing that job as well as I possibly could. The Hall of Famer was a Pro Bowler every year but his last and was named All-Pro five times. Vermont, Steve Wisniewski, born in the Northeast, moved to Texas and eventually settled with the Raiders for 13 fantastic seasons. Wisniewski played 206 of a possible 208 career games and was selected to eight Pro Bowls. The Silver and Black made five playoff trips with him on the O-line. Virginia Lawrence Taylor. He was like a god, and he lived up to it as a player. Hey, baby, let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs and have some fun. A god amongst men, the Hall of Fame linebacker catalyzed the Giants' resurgence in the 80s. LT was the first and only rookie to win Defensive Player of the Year. In 1986, he became just the second defender to win NFL MVP. The G-Men won their first two Super Bowls with number 56 leading the charge. Washington, John Elway, the son of a football coach, Elway bounced around from Washington to Montana to Idaho to finally California throughout his childhood. Selected number one in the 1983 draft, Elway was traded to Denver and led the franchise to five Super Bowls throughout his Hall of Fame career. Elway boots and rolls to his right, stops, loads it up, throws down deep the middle of the field. Rod Smith's got it! Here we go! Rod Smith, Denver touchdown! And he beat Eugene Robinson on the play, 80 yards for John Elway. Elway was the 1987 NFL MVP and walked out on top with back-to-back -to -back Lombardis. Washington, D.C., Jonathan Ogden. Although it's not a state, we must show some love to the nation's capital and its best player. As one of the best left tackles of all time, Ogden was a franchise cornerstone of the Baltimore Ravens and was the team's first ever draft pick. Wisconsin, J.J. Watt. The best to come from the Badger State, number 99 was a level above during his peak. That dude is just a monster, he's a manimal. They say all men are created equal, I disagree, because J.J. Watt and I were not created the same. Watt won three Defensive Player of the Year awards in a four-year span from 2012 to 2015. He even finished second in MVP voting in 2014. A five-time All-Pro, two-time sack leader, and a joy to watch on Sundays. West Virginia, Randy Moss. He quickly became one of the NFL's greats and might be the best athlete the league has ever seen. And my whole goal is to just come in and do whatever I can to, to wreck this whole league. You Got Mossed is now part of the football vernacular. He holds the record for most receiving scores by a rookie and most in a single season with 23. Moss has the second most touchdown catches in league history. Wyoming, Boyd Dowler. Last but not least, the Packers legend was 1959 Rookie of the Year and a five-time NFL champ. Dowler paced Green Bay in receiving yards in four different seasons and blew open Super Bowl II with this huge TD grab. Close one over the middle of Boyd Dowler who's all alone. He's at the 30, the 25, the 20. He crosses the 10 and goes into the end zone for a touchdown. And there you have it, the best of the best from all 50 states and our nation's capital. What do you think? Drop us a line down in the comments section and let us know. As always, thanks for spending time with us.